What if I told you that every single one of us is an investor? Wouldn't you at least want to know what type of investor you were? Well, that's what we're going to be speaking about in this video. Good day guys, Samuel I can win here and if you're brand new to the channel, welcome and if you're back for another video, I would like to say it's great to see you back. Now in this video, we're going to speak about the fact that I actually believe that every single one of us are investors. Now the real challenge with this is the fact that we need to understand what type of investors we are. If we get a good grip on the fact that we're all investors and the type of investor we are, we can start to make real changes into the camps that we need to be in in order for our investing to be more effective. Now let me say this to you, if you knew that you were an actual investor, wouldn't you work on becoming the type of investor you're supposed to be, rather than potentially the kind of investor you are, if the type of investor that you are is not currently serving you? Well, that's the reason I decided to actually put this video together, because I want to help you move forward in your property journey or any other journey, whatever that may be, in order for you to have absolute success. Now, let me share something with you. If you don't believe the concepts I've already started to share with you, that we're all investors, I want you to think about the fact that you are daily investing your time, your talent and your treasure. Now, you might be investing your time in something like a job. You might be investing your talent in something like a hobby. You you might be investing your treasure in something like your fun activities, your recreational activities. But the point is you are an investor and your time, talent and treasure start you on the journey of understanding the type of investor you are. So to get us started today, I'm going to start by using a pseudonym and talking about a few of the people that I know in my social sphere. The first person is named Dorothy. Now Dorothy is a lovely lady and nothing I say here will have any bearing on Dorothy's character or humanity. But nonetheless, we need to talk about Dorothy's habits. Dorothy has a strong habit to follow friends, family and fans. And yes, I said it, fans. She might have some people following her. She might have some friends around her and she might have some family who she's grown up with. But the problem with Dorothy, predominantly those people tend to make those decisions for her. And as a direct byproduct, what that means is Dorothy very rarely makes decisions for herself. So what does that make Dorothy? It doesn't make Dorothy someone who knows what she's necessarily doing. It doesn't make Dorothy someone who basically sets trends and takes risks. It makes Dorothy someone who relies on the voices of other people to make their decisions. Now the reason this is quite powerful is I remember listening to Jim Rohn a number of years ago and one of the statements he made was so powerful and that statement was let every decision you make be a product of your own conclusions. I'll say that again for you for those of you taking notes. Let every decision you make be a product of your own conclusions. Now the reason this statement is so powerful as it pertains to Dorothy is Dorothy doesn't make her own decisions. Dorothy allows the winds and the trends to basically lead her way. Now the reason this is a problem is because in the Bible it says that a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways. Now if you think about what that verse is actually sharing with you, it's a actual formula to help you not fail in life. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So what I want you to do is think about where you invest your time, talent and treasure right now and ask yourself, are you double-minded? Are you having your own mind and the mind of your friends, families and followers rather than having your own analysis, your own conclusion based on the product of your own decisions? Now this doesn't mean that you don't seek counsel. This doesn't mean that you don't find out information. This doesn't mean that you should become a learned student of the investment area that you're interested in so for me in property I have to be studious I have to jump on courses I have to spend time with the best other people that are doing things who are even more experienced than me who are further along in the journey than me but what this does mean is that you can't be a person who's double-minded unsure about everything insecure about everything and lacking a decision about everything don't be the indecisive one who's still working out what their goals and objectives are when other people come around and share with you new goals and new objectives. Now this is Dorothy and this is Dorothy's problem 
And I would say to anyone watching this video that Dorothy is an accidental investor. What I mean by an accidental investor is Dorothy will never get any real success in her life unless someone else set her up for that success. Now again, this doesn't mean that Dorothy is destined to failure. Like I said, Dorothy is a pseudonym for some people that I actually know. But the reality is Dorothy is never going to make it happen herself because Dorothy only succeeds by accident. And this is part of the problem of being an accidental investor, whether it be with your time, whether it be with your talents, whether it be with your treasure. If you are accidentally investing, if you are only investing in certain areas and certain things, in certain properties, because other people are telling you so, then you are destined, in my opinion, for failure. Now, on the other hand, I've got another person I want to bring to the table. Again, I'm going to use a pseudonym to keep it all safe. But this person is Danielle. And I can tell you a few things about Danielle. Danielle is a success. Now, you might look at her today and not recognize the success in her. But I can guarantee you that Danielle's a success. And let me tell you why. Danielle is curious. And because she's curious, she goes out of her way to research and find things out herself. Danielle is conscientious. And because she's conscientious, she takes time to think about things and ask herself, is this right for me? Is this in line with my goals? Is this where I want to go? Danielle is calculated. So by calculated, what I mean is she has a bit of strategy to her. Danielle looks at certain things and says, you know what? I'm interested in this and it lines up with my goals. Let's make it happen. But in light of all of that, Danielle is also cautious. She also looks out of her window and sees things that do not pertain to what she's interested in. She sees the shiny pennies and she very quickly gets to a place where she realizes, no, that's not for me. Let me tell you a secret about Danielle. Danielle is an active investor. Now by active investor, what I mean is when Danielle succeeds, she succeeds because she thought about what she wanted to do. When Danielle succeeds, she succeeds because the things ahead of her are things she's planned meticulously to be ahead of her. Now guys, this is not me trying to say that you need to be a meticulous person, an over engineer of everything you do. No, it's just to say that those four traits that Danielle has are four traits that you should think about manifesting and working on in your life conscientiousness cautiousness being curious and being calculated those four traits could be traits that radically change your life now the reason this is powerful is because yes we know Dorothy is an accidental investor but we can clearly see that there's a second type of investor out there there's a Daniel out there there is an active investor out there. Now, the funniest thing about Danielle is because she's an active investor, she will go and get the opportunities. She will create the opportunities when it feels like there are no opportunities. She will sniff and sense the opportunities when they're kind of close, when they're kind of coming near, she will grab those opportunities. That is the objective as an active investor. So I want you to start to think about this. Which kind of investor are you? Are you a accidental investor or are you an active investor and here guys look i love giving so much more value so i'm going to give you even more value and i'm going to tell you about a third type of investor which hardly anybody talks about the third type of investor are you listening the third type of investor is an average investor now the third type of investor the average investor is a little bit of a concoction a little bit of a mix of both daniel and dorothy the third type of investor, bring in the pseudonym, is Denise. Now, the funniest thing about Denise is Denise does things unexpectedly. Denise is kind of uncalculated, but at the same time, Denise is kind of serious. So because Denise is kind of serious, but unexpectedly uncalculated, the thing with Denise is she gets some success, but not active success. Her success is more sporadic, now and then. Not all the time, not focused, not calculated, not meticulous, not I'm going for it, not I'm taking the ball by its horns. And that's part of the problem. Now guys, I wanna share this with you because again, this might be a concept you're not familiar with. Many active investors, when they slow down and start being accidental investors, become average investors. And equally, many accidental investors, when they turn the gears up and get focused and serious, can at times become average investors. And maybe in certain cases, when they turn it really up, can actively become active investors. The reason I'm sharing this with you guys is because it doesn't actually matter 
where you are right now in your investing journey. It doesn't matter if you're wasting your time. It doesn't matter if you're using your time. It doesn't even matter if you're abusing your time. All of those states can be converted into investing your time in the right thing and the right people in order for you to have radical success along your journey. So I wanna ask you that question. What type of investor are you? And not only what type of investor are you right now, but what type of investor are you trying to be? And feel free to comment below and let us know because I'd love to have the conversation with you and see if I can even help you move forward on your investing journey. So as we wrap up this video, what I wanna do is I want you to start putting on your reticular activator, which is the little mechanism you have in your mind that helps you to start recognizing things. And I want you to start seeing when you recognize a Dorothy, when you recognize a Denise, and when you recognize a Daniel. And the reason why I want you to start recognizing these different character traits in different people is because I want you to start to be able to recognize it first and foremost in yourself. And as you start this ability to start seeing who's an active investor, who's an accidental investor, who's an average investor, this will help you by leaps and bounds to start thinking about how you can shift your gears from wherever you are into the active zone of being an investor. So guys, if you like this video, what I want you to do is press the like button, hit the subscribe button, and why don't you press the bell notification so you can be notified of every single video as and when we put it out. And guys, if you want more of this, I've got a little property hack for you in this video right here where I speak about how you can make money online as it pertains to property. This is Samuel Akinwin. I'm signing out. Happy investing.